this is a perfect segue now to, to the Oscar So White situation because Fox News had Stacey Dash on, who's black, and she was saying sort of to the black community, she was just like, get over it, that this is not an important thing. You do so, know that we have decided that we will take Adele and give you guys Stacey. <laughs> we get Stacey and Dash. We, we will take and Adele. And you want Adele, she, you want, so you basically want <laughs> our... that's a fair trade. You want basically our number one <laughs> yes. white person right now. And you're going to... Yes, Stacey, we love Adele. Stacey, in, you could take Stacey. She was in one movie, I think, in 1995, Clueless. That's what we're getting? Can we hey, get a draft I, pick? I, or? We, we want Adele. You you, I know. Everyone wants Adele. <laughs> that was Every trending on, on in black Twitter, so just it's, the power of social media. Yeah. I, Stacey's entitled to her opinions, I, and I don't necessarily put Stacey in this category. I don't know her personally, but there are people. Of, of every race, every persuasion that have uh, branded themselves as we started this conversation as experts. They like the attention that they get from saying outlandish things. They, they like to be provocative on topics. I don't know if this is her, like I said, I yeah. don't know her personally, but I do know because I sit in this chair and I sit on these shows, you know, four or five times a week. And some of these folks, I, I know that they're uh, intentionally trying to be provocative. But she may believe that African Americans should get over it. I, I say again to her, she's misguided in her thoughts and her statements. Uh, and you have to look at the history. None of this happens in a vacuum. And for those folks who say, well, what about the NAACP Image Awards? They're all black. And what about <laughs> BET? It's yeah. all black. Uh, why aren't white actors complaining about that? And, and I say, well, hist look at the history. Right. Why is there an NAACP? Why are there NAACP Image Awards? Right. I mean, I look, I have no problem with her saying whatever she, if she believes it. Look, even if she's just saying it to say it because she's on television, that's part of the game yep, at some level, is. as you're saying. And if she believes it, then she believes it. I thought the one part that was a little odious really was that she said that we shouldn't have a Black History Month, which every, it's part of our culture, everything. We should have a Black History Month and we should have a Latino History Month and a, And see, that's whatever. the problem. You get on that history slippery slope. Month, and, yeah. Are we going to do away with everything that identifies or celebrates yeah. someone's culture? Let's start with Columbus Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Oscar, so, like, here, so here we go. So there is a big <laughs> brouhaha right now. We got a hashtag on Twitter going. Uh, and a lot of the black community is not happy about this. Um, I should say right up front that Chris Rock, the guy who's going to host the thing, who said he's still going to host it, yes. is black. The president of the academy is black. Sure, Boone Isaacs. Um, but I think 94% of the voters are white. I, yes. I hope I'm getting that Well, right. it's 94% of the academy Of the academy. 77% of the voters right. are white males. Yeah. So, okay, so there are some numbers. Now, I also saw some numbers that were, that since 2000, that pretty much it's been about, uh, that the black community in America is about 10%, or about 12%, and they've gotten about 10% of the nominations. So that, since 2000, that it mm -hmm. basically works out. So I'm just throwing out some numbers to start. How, how yeah, do you feel about I, this whole thing? I think that, again, I love protests. Let me just start there. You can tell that about <laughs> I can me tell, because I can tell. It, it works. Yeah. So Cheryl Boone Isaacs came out and said change needs to happen, but it needs to happen faster. She was frustrated. She was heartbroken. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith did her Facebook video to her 7 million viewers. Uh, and we had Spike Lee make his statement. And guess what happened? There was an emergency meeting on the agenda was this issue of diversity for the academy. And out of that emergency meeting came some commitments that were pretty significant, like we are going to diversify our membership by 2020. We're going to add more women. We're going to add more minorities. Um, and we're going to make the issue of diversity a, a bigger issue for the academy. And it makes sense. I, you know, I didn't tell you this. I went to Harvard for law school, but yeah. my major in college was economics. So some of this stuff just boils down to money. Yeah, I thought you were so, going to say you wanted to be an actress. No, 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 no. I'm an economics major. Yeah. So look at the facts here. Yeah. Last year, they said the, the ratings down 16%. And a lot of that was attributed to last year when there were no black nominees and that hashtag trended. Oscar's so white. The Oscars, Cheryl, they got a job to do. At the end of the day, they got to sell a television program to a network and the network has to bring in sponsors and advertisers. They got to make a lot of money. Right. So imagine if that 16% grew to 25% because high profile African Americans like Spike Lee and Will Smith and Marlon Wayans and Jada Pinkett Smith all said, I'm not going to watch 
I'm right. not attending. And, and to I'm that point, watching. if there were more black people nominated, it's not like suddenly white people would be like, oh, I'm not watching this. No. Because there were some more black nominees is ridiculous. Yes. But do you think there's a little risk, though, in that this, this is forgetting the politics side of it, and we know there's plenty of politics right. in Hollywood, but that these are subjective awards. So it is possible. Do you think it is possible, I should say, that the people voted and they just happened to, the votes just no, worked that's out? Bullshit, you, you just don't no, think that that's no, a possibility? That's not really? Possible. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because what we're hearing is that the membership, they get to watch whatever movies they choose to watch. Yeah. So if I'm a 78-year-old white guy, <laughs> okay, and I got all these movies to watch, what are the chances that I'm going to watch Straight Outta Compton? I, it's just not likely. And, and here's what African Americans want. And I've heard... So that's people, interesting. So that's not necessarily... So that's almost... You would say that's sort of racist by omission. Sort it's, it's more of, more of a cultural than, bias. It's, that's why it's diversity. Bias. That's why diversity matters. I, and someone says, "Well, we don't want affirmative action for the awards." No, we don't want affirmative action. We just want the Academy to reflect the reality of moviegoers. So, forty-six percent of all tickets sold at the box office are from minorities. So, if the people buying your product, by and large, all we're saying is let the Academy reflect those people. And at the end of the day, if an African-American or a Latino decides that Straight Outta Compton isn't a movie that they want to vote for to be Best Picture of the Year, okay, we yeah. can live with that. We're not asking that it get any special treatment. All we're asking for is diversity so that at least there's some confidence that the process is fair, even the playing field. Don't give us any greater advantages. You know, Viola Davis says it best, the difference between black women in TV and white women are the opportunities. So we're really just talking about opportunities. And Spike Lee, I think, was spot on saying, this happens way before we get to the award seasons. This is happening in the C-suites at studios because when we look at who can green light projects, that's where we've got to start. There's no diversity, there's no African. I think he told me that, well, I think he said there's one African American that has the power to green light a project. So it starts with... Like a major studio project. A major studio, yes. Yeah. Obviously not independent films, but yeah. it starts with those, the number of, and Whoopi Goldberg talked about this on The View as a, a director and an executive producer, is that the black directors and writers and producers, they cannot get their projects through mainstream studios. And when they do, their budgets are smaller, and the opportunities for success on those projects. But just again, I'm gonna go back to my economics. Right, so right, yeah, go to that. You have Straight Outta Compton making $200 million. You have Ride Along 3 pushing Star Wars out of the top slot. Mm -hmm. I think somebody ought to take note. The bean counters, the accountants, the money people ought to be taking note of that and, and ought to do what TV has done to recognize, hey, there's, there's some money in these Look, urban movies. And that, to me, that's the interesting part, because if I know one thing about now living in L.A. and being part of Hollywood or whatever this is, is that this town, I think, basically is just run by people want to make money. That, that it's a capitalistic town. It's not like... It, so your argument, though, would, would prove if you, they said, all right, guys, we're looking at the numbers here, 46% of the people that are coming to movies are minorities, then we should be trying to increase that percentage of the pie. It's not going to come at the cost necessarily of your white viewers that I think the town but, would be, would go for that because I, they, they want to make money. But I think that's the fear, Dave. You hit on something really important and we're seeing that in the presidential election. This fear that if, if I make way for you, African American minorities, somehow that means there's no way for me. Right. So your, your success comes at my expense. And this is also what you should have learned, I'm sure you have, about this town is very relationship driven. Sure. So if I, you know, if I don't have that relationship with you, I'm not necessarily even going to get in the room to have the meeting. And again, to Spike Lee's point, if we don't have more diversity in the top jobs, in upper level management, in the decision making positions, then maybe I'm never even in the conversation. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I saw our friend Larry Elder, who we've now mentioned a few times here, uh, I saw he was tweeting at Spike and basically was saying, come on, Spike, you've made, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, you're selling your mansion in New York for 35 million bucks, it's a little disingenuous for you, now I think I know what you're gonna say to this, but I think it's interesting that it's good at least that any community is having those internal 
fights. Yeah, but again, look how ridiculous that argument is. You can sit here and say, <laughs> Reva, come on, your son has <laughs> autism. So when you're standing up fighting for more autistics or services for people with autism, that's just about enriching your own son's life. Oftentimes, it's people's own personal experiences that causes them to become advocates or activists. And it is because of Spike Lee's position inside the movie industry that he has the voice and the credibility to speak to it. I surely don't have any credible voice about making a movie. I've never made a damn movie, so who wants to hear from me about that? Right, you want to make a movie? Uh, yeah, no, I don't want to make a movie. I want to talk about the folks that make movies. <laughs> I enjoy that better. Yeah. But I, you know, I think his argument is disingenuous, and I think Spike Lee is in the best position. And he's been on this point. He, he's not new to this party. If you look at the yeah. history of Spike Lee, and Spike Lee will tell you lots of projects he didn't get because he's always been outspoken about this issue of race and diversity and inclusion. And yes, he's made a lot of money and, and make more of it. Right. And very unironically, Spike is fighting the same fight in reality that a lot of his movies were about fighting. And he's so, made his movies. It's not like he's coming out of nowhere with this. And he's know. hired. Yeah. And this is a statistic I didn't even know until he got this uh, honorary Oscar himself. He's hired more African-American actors than any studio bar none. So here's one guy who has not had you know, a, a slew of blockbuster movies, but yet he has made it a point to hire more African-American actors. And he took, accepted that award with Sam Jackson and Denzel Washington, you know, top actors, black, white, green, no matter what. Or, you know, and they were there because they've been in so many of his movies. So. You know, it just hit me as we're talking about this that it's so sad that so much has to be, you know, framed within, within the racial lens because we haven't gotten it there yet. Because I've had Jack A. Harry on my show, mm -hmm. who was the first black woman to ever win an Emmy. And I remember watching 227 Seven. when I was like, I was probably 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, this woman is absolutely hysterical. Yes. I didn't look at her and think, oh, there's a black woman making me laugh. I just thought, this woman is hysterical. And I guess, you know, talent ultimately is what has to reach the top. But that doesn't mean that some of these systemic things can't be... Uh, yeah, no, obvious, and that's, again, that's for people, we're not talking per se about affirmative action, but people, I think, get that wrong. We're not asking that you lower the standards. We're asking that you even the playing field, and that's yeah. a very big difference. What would you say to the people, I've seen this bubble up a little bit lately, that people are saying, well, if you look at the Latino community, their, their numbers in America versus their nominations, or the Asian community, really, uh, that they they never get nominated, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see a lot of people saying, well, the, the black community is fighting the wrong fight here. They're fighting something that makes everyone else go, ah, you're fighting about Oscars. Nobody cares about Oscars. While the Latino community is way less represented in, uh, in Hollywood. That is a fantastic question. And like, I, I knew I'd get one right. I knew <laughs> I'd get one. Look at the history. What do black people do? We break the damn doors yeah. down. So everybody else, the gays, the Latinos, the Asians, women can walk through the door. So watch what happens. When diversity happens, it's not gonna just be about black actors, it's gonna be about diverse actors. It's gonna be Latinos, Asians, people with disabilities. They will all benefit. Somebody has to lead on this. And if you look historically, it's been African Americans who've been willing, even though you're right, disproportionately, our numbers are much smaller than Latinos. Yeah. But we have a much more uh, uh, organized and developed uh, system of protesting and raising issues of racial inequality uh, in this country than Latinos and Asians. And trust me, when we break the doors down, nobody else is saying, oh my God, they broke that damn door down. I don't want to walk through it. Watch <laughs> Right, like run. that door is too broken yes, for me. Yes, watch everybody run through that door. So I would say to Latinos, Asians, stand up with us. We all benefit from this. We're yeah. not saying that it's all black actors. I want to, I'm a woman. I want to see more females. I want to see, I, I'm a, a disability rights advocate. I want to see more individuals with disabilities portrayed in movies and, and television. So I think nothing but good from any marginalized group comes from the efforts of what we see happening on this Oscar So White. Yeah, in a way it shows the strength of the black community actually oh because God. Because a lot of what we care about culturally and the music we listen to and yes. and all of that stuff comes from the black community. Absolutely. So it's like, in a way, the, the black community has to lead on this for the other minorities. So it does kind of make sense. And for those folks that say, oh, my God, you know, this is a bunch of millionaires fighting about a gold statue. Who cares? I, 
the Oscars are a very important institution, and the entertainment industry, particularly in a state like California, is huge. And again, if we're buying 46% of the tickets at the box office, this is an issue that we need to be aware of. Does it mean that we don't care about hunger? Does it mean that we don't care about poverty and the, fa poverty and the fact that, you know, one out of three black kids live in poverty? No. And we, our, our capacity is large enough that we can fight the fight on poverty as well as address issues at the Oscars. I don't see them as mutually exclusive at all.